uh, it does not involve people, it does not involve ministries, it involves the word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and uh, thank God for such dear friends that you can always uh, uh, count on and leverage on. Uh, he has always supported us in Cosmo City with our little group. Uh, we are following in your footsteps. Uh, you are ahead of us, but uh, we are following as well. Uh, we are not trying to overtake you. We just want to catch up with you. Then we can walk together. <laughs> And uh, always uh, want to invite him. Um, so he has not told you. Uh, I will tell. I will tell you he's not here next week. <laughs> well, in the morning, amen. <laughs> he's gonna come a little bit late. <laughs> Pastor, I just said to do that. <laughs> you come a little bit late, but uh, you come to service a, bit, a little bit late, but you come. <laughs> oh, it's convenient service. Ah, so this is good. This is good. <laughs> Amen. Uh, just want us to, uh, while you are seated down, uh, let us uh, go again into the book of, uh, in, in the Bible, into the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9. So, uh, <clears throat> I, I see our time is fast spent. And uh, I know the pastor has given me the liberty to go. Uh, so yeah, I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that that option of uh, keeping you all long. <laughs> no, I don't mean it. Um, I I don't preach to finish. I I rarely finish my sermons. I I I, I, don't, I think I can count the number of times I've I've finished my sermons. I only preach to wait for a signal. And if that signal arrives, I quit. So you have to walk with me. And uh, I know I've preached 15 minutes and I stopped. I've preached 30 minutes and I stopped. I've preached 40 minutes and I stopped. I've preached one hour and I stopped. I've preached one hour, 30, and two hours and I stopped. So as soon as I get the signal... I'll stop. Then we can enter into a time of prayer. Uh, so it depends, but I don't preach to finish. I, I, I don't preach to finish. I thought I must emphasize that. So if you see me not finishing, you must know that the signal is not yet there. <laughs> so we are waiting for the signal. So uh, please walk with me in these few, few minutes that we are going to preach. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand And behold six men came from the way of the higher gate Which lieth toward the north And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand and one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink on by his side. And they went in and stood by the brazen altar. Sorry, Pastor, can I have some water, please? Verse 3. And the glory of, of the God of Israel was upon from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshing floor of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes pay, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, 
but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary then they began at the ancient men which were before the house may god add blessings to the reading of his word <laughs> hallelujah amen um I'm, like I said, I'm very glad to come to Tsakane. Amen. Uh, God bless you, Brother Pio. I'm happy to see you again. Amen. <clears throat> so today, I want to speak on a message, uh, a little message entitled, The Mark of God. So the mark of God is none other than the seal of God. And here we are told in the book of Ezekiel, that uh, the men that were coming, that were sent, they were holding, they were holding some destroying weapons. And these men were supposed to go in and only look for people that were sighing and crying for the abominations that were in the city. <coughs> only those that were sighing and crying, those that are the ones that were supposed to be, uh, to be marked. And as soon as the one that had a writer's ink on went into the city and found those that were only sighing and crying and praying against the abominations that were in the city, those that were supposed to receive a mark. And that mark was the distinction that these people with destroying weapons would come and now destroy everyone. And the, <coughs> sorry, the command was to make sure Sorry. <coughs> the command was to make sure that anyone that doesn't have a mark was supposed to be destroyed. So you see, brother, sister, in the, in the spoken word, the seal of God, brother Branham says, the mark of God is the seal of God. And uh, the mark of God is not a natural mark to the believer. It is a spiritual mark. Same as the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is not uh, Russia. The mark of the beast is not communism. The mark of the beast is so when someone rejects the mark of God. And they, they get the seal of the Antichrist. Which is the mark of the Antichrist. So it's either one way. It's a one way road. You receive uh, either the mark of God or you receive the mark of the, of the beast. You don't choose to stay in the middle. You're either to the left side or you are to the right side. So I want to say today, saints, that the requirements of the gospel of God have not changed. Whatever Paul preached uh, uh, during the first church age, it is still counted uh, important today. There has not been, there's not been any change. It is us today who are trying to change things. We think that if uh, someone is coming to church, they are now a believer. It was a requirement on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 that every man must be baptized. And that every man should be confess their sins. The requirements have not changed. The requirements are still intact because God does not change. He said in the book of Malachi, I am the Lord and I change not. And brother, that is the greatest revelation, brother, from the Bible. That the Lord does not change. Hallelujah. What he did back there, he is still doing it today. Thank you so much, Pastor. So the requirements of the gospel have not changed. Everyone is supposed to, to get the mark of God. If you want to go to heaven, you must have the seal of God. You must get the seal of God. Amen. If you want to go to heaven, brother, sister, we are talking of the seal of God. We are talking of the mark of God. There is no other route to heaven. You know, people today are enjoying to fill up churches, are enjoying to have many, many believers in the church. But brother, the most important thing is being left out. And we want to mention it. And we want to emphasize it that people should receive the mark of God. And without the mark of God, there is no way we are going. And brother, sister, I want to emphasize the importance of this. I want to emphasize, brother, sister, that wherever you are, if you don't get the mark of God, there is a destroyer that is coming with a destroying weapon. 
and he doesn't care that you are pregnant. He doesn't care that you are a pastor. He doesn't care that you are a preacher. He doesn't care that you sing special songs. He is coming to destroy you if you don't have the mark of God. God is looking for someone who wants to receive the mark of God. Hallelujah. Brother, it's not about believing the message because the devil believes the message and he trembles. Hallelujah. It's about going a notch higher, an octave higher. That's where you meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we are looking for the mark of God. Everywhere you go, my brother, my sister, that's what is where you are supposed to look for. You might have received the mark of God when you were in grade 7 or when you were in grade 8, my brother, my sister. You cannot rely on that experience. You still need a new experience, a fresh, fresh experience. He is a God that will repeat things what, that you have done before. He will repeat what you have done before. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. There is no other route, brother, sister, of going to heaven. We must not forget that we are here because we want to go to heaven. We came from God and we are going back to God. We did not come here to wear suits. We did not come here to get married. It is just part of the journey. We did not come here to, to get degrees. We did not come here, brother, sister, to go for a master's degree. Hallelujah. But we came here, brother, sister, to overcome the devil and go back home again. Hallelujah. And that's why we are in a battle. That's why we are not going to give up. Because we are overcomers. And an overcomer has to find troubles on the road and overcome. Hallelujah. We don't want people with, without a backbone. People that will give up easily. They are wishy-washy. They don't have a backbone. Hallelujah. Where are you going to stand, brother, sister, when you see a 50-year-old woman going into heaven, but they have never been married, and you quit at 28 years because there's no brother to marry you? you your testimony is not going to stand. Hallelujah. Boyfriend or no boyfriend, I will receive the mark of God. Husband or no husband, I will receive the mark of God. I have got an agenda. I have got a purpose. Hallelujah. I have got a purpose. I am determined, brother, sister, that I'm going back to where I came from. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going back where I came from. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Yes, I can wear shoes like you, but I don't come from here. I can go into a taxi like everyone else, but I don't belong here. I'm waiting for an emergency exit. Hallelujah. I want to go out of here. And I want the mark of God. I want the mark of God to carry me through. Hallelujah. I want the mark of God, my brother, my sister. And without the mark of God, the destroyer is coming to destroy you. He is coming to destroy you. Hallelujah. In, where, in our country where I come from, there is a place called Morgenstern Hospital. And when, when you come in from Morgenstern Hospital, going down towards the, the, the southern side, there is a popular road there. It's known, it's known as a, a caving road. So many drivers, uh, they always are driving down there because it's caving and going and going and going. And it's also uh, on a slope. So many drivers, they get in that slope and they enjoy the ride. As they are going, brother, you see the vehicle is just getting momentum. And it will drive and drive. But as you get to the end, there is a sharp curve. And many, and if you check on the other right side of the road, there is many, many car bodies. There is many, many things that are laying there because of people that were going down the road and they were derailed. Amen. So this is a cave that needs someone that has got an experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And without experience, you will not pass that cave. We will find you there in a wreckage. Brother, sister, you need the Holy Ghost to help you to make decisions. You need the seal of God to help you to choose. You need the seal of God. You need the mark of God inside you to choose the right things of you because you don't know what is good for you. Hallelujah. 
with your own eyes you think this is good for me but you don't know what is good for you you don't even know what is the best for you adam he never knew that there's something called a wife he never knew that he was there alone there naming the animals you are a monkey you are a donkey you are an, an elephant you are a, a lion and he was alone there and he, he, he was never even lonely but god saw that no man he needs something because god knows what is best for us we don't know what is good for us hallelujah and that is why when we go through challenges brother sister we know that there is something that is brewing there is something that is happening hallelujah sometimes you hold on to people that you think these are people that i need for my journey and they leave you alone and you have a heartbreak sometimes that you can't even hold on your own because you think that you're on your own but don't worry sister god is doing something the will of god is moving on hallelujah and nothing will go out of cater hallelujah oh praise be to god amen i want to read quotation number one from the spoken word the seal of god uh, 5405141188 he says and notice if you come to jeffersonville and i don't want to say to jeffersonville but i want to say if you come to sakane hallelujah tonight to the joy tabernacle or any other tabernacle in the city or any other church who would you put a mark upon that was so sincere and honest before god that they wept and cried and prayed every day and night for the sin of the city what would it do to the preachers that they that let their women get out there in bathing suits in stretch out in shorts and walk up and down the streets and sing in the choir and today brother sister we see these things in the message we see these things in the churches that people think that the requirements have changed you see sisters in miniskets coming to sing a special song hallelujah i'm not saying there's someone here with a miniskirt but maybe you were thinking of buying a miniskirt i want to tell you that you must cover your body up hallelujah you see sisters with a cleavage and a dress that is here they say they are a sister you are not yet a sister you need an experience hallelujah praise be to god amen and you see people trying to follow the world when the world is going this way we must be going the other route you know there are some things that i don't do even if they are right but because the world is doing it i say i can't do this hallelujah i can't do this hallelujah you must wear properly and cover your body cover yourself up not to uh, publicize your body to make the world know about you the neighbor knows your body that is supposed to be a sacred body to your husband and you are out there and you are claiming to be a christian you are a liar hallelujah you need a dose of the altar hallelujah and you see women today they came to be christians and they walk out there naked some of them they even walk out in morning gowns a morning gown outside and they are claiming to be a sister and people are even imagining that is she wearing things inside ukuna kunye mudzani wewe he is only looking for those that are crying and sighing for the sins that are in the city hallelujah sighing and crying for what is going on in the city he is looking to put a mark to put a mark there hallelujah praise be to god amen and when men out there smoking and drinking and carrying on and gambling and everything else and they act as if they are un- they was unconcerned about it going to some big chicken dinner or a party somewhere stay home on wednesday nights and look at television instead of attending the prayer meeting in the summer time close the church for the services what would you seal when tonight or this this day that we are in social media has taken over there is no communication in the home because mama is on social media posting every day papa is on social media 
Because the everyone is, is thinking of putting things on social media. Everyone is there wasting time. Precious time that must be sent on the altar. And when the time to pray as a family comes now, everyone is tired. Everyone is tired because they've been feeding. Feeding on wrong things. Feeding a strange appetite. Feeding oneself on wrong things. And you get tired and weakened. You don't need an iPhone. You don't need an Android phone. You need the mark of God. Hallelujah. You, need, you don't need Facebook. You don't need WhatsApp. You don't need anything. You need the mark of God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Because that's where you see the slave queens that you want to, you know, that you want to copy now. These sisters that want to pretend as if they are sisters. They are on an agenda to destroy the message. And they have been sent by the devil. And we are here to protect the children of God. Through preaching of the word. Hallelujah. To run away from social media. Run away from these things. And run to Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Problem says, paragraph 190, what we need tonight is a lot of this, is a lot, what we need tonight is a lot of, here. Yeah, this Hollywood evangelism choked down in an old fashion, God sent revival, men and women who get down at the altar and you quit this shaking hands and holding up hands and sprinkle them and baptizing them first forward, backwards, and all these other little forms and isms. And get down to real, contrite, broken spirit where sin is. Mix that together and start an old-fashioned crying out. If a newborn child, amen. That's the kind that gets the Holy Ghost. That's right. No matter whether they are Methodist, Baptist, or Catholics, or whatever they are, when they get before the altar and cry, day and night, oh Lord God, look at the sins of this city. My heart can rest. I can rest. Lord, to see these things going on, oh God, do something. Send us an old-fashioned revival. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. <laughs> the gospel is about to return to the Jews. God is waiting to just round off this time so that he can take back his gospel to the Jews. And the gentle bride is supposed to go into the rapture. Amen. And brother, sister, don't be fooled. There is no more time. People think that they can still carry on and carry on. Don't be fooled, brother, sister. We are almost there. We can see, brother, sister, that the sun is setting. Technology is getting, is getting there. Everything is happening, brother, sister. The sun is about to set down. And we are just waiting and waiting. And we're looking towards the eastern sky. Because we know that the trumpet is going to sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain. We will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. And don't be filled, brother, sister. If you die without the mark of God, you won't hear the trumpet. You need the mark of God. Hallelujah. You need the mark of God. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Paragraph 293, Brabham says, One of these days, the last Holy Ghost anointed gospel sermon will be preached. Amen. One of these days, the last gun will fire. One of these days, the last song will be sung. The sister will come here and will sing the last song. And she will be singing like an angel. And you will be feeling it that something is about to happen. And you'll be feeling it that, no, man, I'm not, I'm not feeling things. I don't know what is happening. Yeah. It is time, brother, sister. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, like what happens in the morning when the sun is about to rise up, the dew is on the leaves because it was snoring in the night. And when the sun rises up, you can see the small little dew drops. They'll be vibrating because they're getting the energy from the sun. 
and they vibrate and vibrate and vibrate and vibrate until they say I've done enough of this and all it goes the church is about to go the church is about to go and I want to tell you brother sister we are now at a time when we need to be sincere about these things hallelujah praise be to God amen the requirements have not changed the requirements are still the same even if you want to get married I want to tell you today the requirements have not changed we have changed things we allow people without the Holy Ghost to get married and today they don't love one another they are kicking and screaming and coming to the pastor's office every day because they are married without the Holy Ghost you need the mark of God to be married hallelujah you don't need to be married you need the mark of God praise be to God amen that's what you need. Hallelujah. The requirements have not changed. In 2015, there were two men. Uh, one was called uh, Temba, and the other one I think was called Markel. They met in Johannesburg, and they said, my friend, we are the poorest people here. We are tired. This one, Temba, lost his cousin. When the cousin died, he had nobody to take care of him. And the other one, Markel, had come from Mozambique. And they, in a, they in a, uh, a camp, uh, he had to run away and come to South Africa. And they met in the pub, in, the, in, the, in a nightclub. Then they decided, let's, let's be friends. As they went to the Tembas place, he was staying in the streets. They saw a book of aircraft engineering. And they studied the, the book of aircraft engineering. They said, let us study the airplane. And then when we study an airplane, we can go on one of the planes. We want to go to London or to the whatever where we can go. Let us not go to America because we don't want to pass over the ocean. Let us go somewhere where we can go with a plane. Okay. They hitched a plan. And they decided that we are going to London. Although we don't have tickets, they didn't have any token. To show that they want to go. They said we're going to use the back door. Via the back door. They did not have tickets to go. They said we're going to go via the back door. When everyone else was buying tickets. And spending money to buy tickets. And everyone else was packing. These men they said let's get three jackets. And two t-shirts on. And some trousers on. They had studied how an aeroplane is. And then they jumped over the fence in our temple. And they went into the runway. As they saw one British Airways aircraft that was about to leave the tarmac. They jumped in there. It was a 747-100. They jumped into the gear. And they went under the, 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 in the wheels compartment. Off the plane took, took off to London. For 10 hours, brother, sister. They endured a 9,000 kilometer flight. The temperature when you're in midair, it drops to minus 60 degrees Celsius. As they were going there, as the, the airplane was taking off, this one told the other, says, my friend, we have made it. <laughs> the requirements have not changed. You need a token. God bless you, Pastor. You need a token. Hallelujah. As the plane, the plane took off, they went there. Timbers body on the road, on the, on the, F, F, in, the, in, the in the flight, fell into a coma. Because when the temperature below drops to minus 60, your body stops functioning. And they say that made him to survive. Because his body was now no longer functioning. His brain didn't need to have a lot of blood. Because you run out of oxygen in mid-air. As they were now about to land on Heathrow Airport. The other guy fell down. And on top of an office building and he died there. As the plane was landing. Temba fell off. Because as the wheels are coming out. I think they kicked him out. And he fell on the tarmac with a shattered leg. And as he saw the people that were coming to take him, he fell into a coma for six months. He says when he woke up, 
It was about six months later. And he was in a hospital. What am I trying to say, brother, sister? They wanted to use the wrong route. They wanted to use the wrong route. But brother, this one of God, it does not change. You cannot go via the back door. Whether you've been in the message for 20 years without the mark of God, brother, sister, it will not work. You have to get the mark of God. You will not make it on your own. You will not make it without the mark of God. You need the mark of God. Hallelujah. And brother, sister, when you get the mark of God, you can get into a taxi, but you must know that the whole host of heaven is within me. The taxi driver can shout at you, can swear at you, can say a lot of things about you, but there's one thing that is happening. Heaven is in the taxi. Hallelujah. Heaven is in the taxi. Praise be to God. Amen. Sometimes uh, the accident is about to happen. But because you are in the taxi, God will stop everything else. Because your time here is not yet finished. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. When you are studying for a degree or a PhD or anything, you must know that that is not the focus. The focus, brother, sister, is the main thing. Brother Branham speaks of a one man. That man had a poor life. He grew up very poor. Amen. And when he grew up very poor, I think he, I can't remember, I think he picked up a flower. That flower, the condition was, wherever he was going, he was not supposed to leave that flower. Everywhere he was going, he was supposed to go with that flower. I can't remember the spoken word. Said so then one day, with that flower, he went to a mountain and he opened the mountain with that flower. And when he opened the mountain, he saw bars and bars of gold. And when he saw bars and bars of gold, he picked up everything that he wanted. He picked up everything that he wanted. Then he was about to go. Then the flower says, you are now leaving the main thing. Then he said, what is it? What is it? He went back. He took some more of them. He took some more. Then he left the flower. He have left the main thing. But he never bothered. And when it spoke again, he shut it up. And he left. He went like that. He forgot that the main thing was the flower. And today, brother, sister, the church must not forget that the, the Holy Spirit or the token or the, the message of the hour is the main thing. Hallelujah. And where we read, brother, in the book of Joshua, yeah, we saw that now Joshua was told to make sharp knives, to circumcise these people. Because when they came out of Israel, of Egypt, uh, there were many children that were born in the wilderness and they were never circumcised. These were people that were Israelites. These were people that were in the church, but they were never circumcised. And Joshua was told to circumcise them. And he circumcised all of them as soon as they crossed over. But now I want you to watch, brother, sister. Before they crossed over, before they crossed over, oh, when they were now about to cross over the river Jordan, Joshua was told now to tell the people that we need to cross. And you must check the timing. It was done in the month of Abib. Because God works with the month of Abib. Now, look, brother, sister. I want you to see exactly what happened. They were told by the, the officers, went through the host, and say, as soon as you see the ark of God about to move out, you put your eyes on the ark of God. And Joshua told the priests to carry the ark. And everyone was told, watch the ark. Why the ark? Because the ark is the word. The word is supposed to be in the front as they were following. And the priests were told to carry the ark on their shoulders. And then they were told to leave a gap of about 2,000 cubits. Because they had never gone this before. They had never been there before. And who was carrying the ark? The priests. Which means, brother, sister, the, 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 the priests are supposed to carry the ark, which is the word of God. On the shoulder. Not a tape recorder. Not a laptop. But the priest is supposed to carry the word. 
and they were told to wash the priest because the priest is carrying the word. Without the priest, then they could not cross over. They were told, you have not gone this way before. You need the priest. And that's why the Bible says, your pastor will see you through. Not yourself, but your pastor will see you through. Hallelujah. That's why you're supposed to owe all your thoughts to your pastor. You are supposed to get close to him. Don't be too far away from him. Always be close to him. Visit him. Interact with him. Let him know where you stay. Whether you stay in a one bedroom room or whether you stay in a college room, make sure you're close to your pastor. Hallelujah. There are people that run away from the pastor. They always want to make enemies of the pastor. <laughs> you are supposed to be close to him. Don't be a burden. Hallelujah to the pastor. If he asks you to do something, help him to do something. If you ask you to song lead the songs, go and practice the songs so that you can help to song lead. Be, be helpful to the pastor. Don't cause them to, be, to don't cause him to have a blood pressure because of you. When he's sleeping at home, he's thinking that man is going to give me a BP. Don't be that kind of person. Don't be that sister who will give the pastor a BP. When the pastor is worried that I heard she went to faith. Ah, shame. Is she going to come back? Is she going to come back? He went to Mozambique to, to order some things. Ah, is he going to come back? If someone, get, if, if, if someone gets a place at a college, oh, the pastor is already worried. He can't say no. Because if he, if he says no, the people think that he doesn't want us to develop. Mara, no, he knows you. Remember, a pastor is a shepherd. And a shepherd knows the sheep. He knows the behavior of the sheep. That's why sometimes you hear that a shepherd will break some of the sheep's legs. Why? Because he says, this sheep didn't want to, he didn't love me. And he was always running from me, away from me. And I broke his leg so that I can care, take care of him. Then he can start loving me. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? Can I get an amen from someone? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. You must take care of your pastor. Amen. God will take care of you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. You must even buy suits for your pastor. Hallelujah. You must buy suits for your pastor. Hallelujah. And when you're sitting in the bench, you'll be telling your wife, you see, this is the suit that he's wearing. The one that we bought. The one that we bought from Markham. And when the pastor is happy, and the church is happy, then God is happy. And you come down in a mighty way. And when you come to church, brother and sister, they will be charged here. Everything will be happening. You don't need to sing songs. As soon as you get into here, the glory of God will come down. Healings will take place. Holy Ghost will come on people. People will be blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Joshua had a promise that whatsoever, wherever you are going to stay, that you are going to take over. And these children of God, they were told, brother, sister, they were supposed to cross over. Why were they supposed to cross over? Because they were supposed to go and get the inheritance. Across the land, across the Jordan River, was the land of possession. And they were supposed to go there and possess the land. They were not supposed to stay beyond Jordan, before Jordan. Because that was not their land. That was not the promise. That was not the land of milk and honey. They were supposed to cross over. And all the people that did not cross over, they were never nobodies. You remember the tribe of Manasseh, half tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of God. These ones, they crossed over and then they came back again. They were never very, very familiar or popular. 
because they were not in the exact promised land. But the ones that were in the land of milk and honey, check if you check Caleb, he was in the land of milk and honey. That's why he says at, four, at 85 years, you remember when the, the, the pastor told me that this is my land. You were there when I went to, 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 to spy the land. And I came back with a good report. And I was given this land. And he said, now give me this land. Give me my possession. Give me my possession. Hallelujah. And he was specific of what he wanted. He did not want anything else. He wanted his inheritance. And brother, sister, we as Christians, we are supposed to worry about our inheritance. And our inheritance is the Holy Spirit. You are not looking for blessings, my brother. Because even the world will get blessings. But if you inheritance, brother, sister, your, chest, your testimony will change. Imagine, brother, sister, when you, you without, uh, with, with blessings, you can give testimonies like, I was standing at the road, and I was waiting for a taxi, and I didn't know what to do. It started to rain, and then someone came and gave me a lift. Oh, I saw God. That's a testimony of a blessing. But now when you are now blessed, brother, you are coming to church and giving a testimony. I was going down the road at 120 kilometers per hour with my Range Rover. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's an inheritance. That's not a blessing. It's an inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's now an inheritance. And he said, when it was raining, I saw another sister that was standing on the road and it was raining. And I said, their hair is going to get wet. And I gave them a lift. The testimony has changed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. The testimony has changed. Brother, we need John Charles to come out of this church. We need John Charles to come out of this church. Never be worried about our numbers. You are a very big church, let me tell you. You just need the right mentality. You just need the right kind of attitude. You need to cross over and take your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need an inheritance. You need an inheritance. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. You, you are better than us. I'm telling you, you are far better than us. You know, in our congregation, we, uh, there was a time when no, very few people were working. And I think I was only one of them that was working with like a, a not, not even a decent job. But when our, our people were looking at me, they would say, oh, this one has got a better job. And every day, it was a disaster to survive. And God had called me to lead that kind of congregation. And what was the way forward was to only preach the gospel, the true gospel. Not a gospel of, of, of blessings or what. A gospel that these people should realize that they must get their in inheritance. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, brother, sister, it was so hard that even our ties plate was not even enough to pay our rent. And we had to fork deep and, and fork deep to make sure that we spent the, 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 the month through. It was not easy. And then we started preaching about inheritance. Preaching about getting the mark of God. Preaching about getting the seal of God. The reason why you can't get a job is because you are looking for a blessing. You need to get the Holy Ghost and he will lead you to where the job is. Hallelujah. And we preached, brother, sister. We preached, we preached and people caught it. And I want to tell you that now the testimonies that we are having, it's not people that are looking for jobs. Because if you look for a job, you are looking for just a blessing. We have got testimonies of brothers who are now directors. Managing directors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And last week, we had a brother. He's, 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 he, that brother, God bless you, my brother. Amen. And we preach, brother, sister, that don't worry about these people. Don't go and knocking on their doors to say, I'm looking for a job. You are not looking for a job. You want to be the job yourself. So we have got now 
Bro, one, one brother last week was giving a testimony. He says, now I don't want to be a driver because he was a driver. And they were chasing him. They don't know what is inside him. And they were kicking him and all over. They were making him a nobody. He said, I'm tired of this. He invented his company, XXX Innovations. He became the director. And now he was knocking on people's doors. I'm quoting. I want to court you to do this. I want to court you to do this. And last week, he got a court. He was giving a testimony. And you know when a man is giving a testimony, he says, the man is too much. He says, it's too much. It's too much. I want you to go out there, sister, and court. Go and sign the quotation and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm sending out this quotation. I'm sending out this quotation. I'm not depending on myself. I'm not depending on my capability. But I'm depending on God's capability. Lord, you know me. I cannot do these things. But you can do these things. Hallelujah. And the brother just completed the job. And the job is so beautiful. A beautiful job. And the owner, the person that gave him the job, he says to him, God sent you to come and do this job for us. And there is a promise of another job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. And I'm saying that this brother, sister, you must realize that the thing of wanting to eat manna is a wrong motive. Because manna is just a blessing in the wilderness. It is not for the promised land. And as soon as they crossed over, manna ceased. Because it was not their blessing. It was not their predestination. They were supposed to cross over and possess the land. That's why when they crossed over, they were told, before we get into the land, let us make sharp knives. Sharp knives. And circumcise all the flesh. To cut off excess flesh. To cut off all excess social media. Where you spend a lot of time on social media. When other people are sending out quotations. Of billions of dollars. And you are wasting time on social media. To cut off excess flesh. Stop. Stop this social media thing. Cut off excess flesh. Go and read your Bible. Go and read your spoken word. Go and seek the Holy Ghost. Go and pray. Go and, 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 and witness the gospel to the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go and witness the gospel. You are here, but there is nobody from your family that, does, that, that, that believes what you believe. They don't know that you are a Christian because you are not telling them. Take the spoken word, brother, sister. And go and witness the gospel. Go to the corners and say, you know me. I used to be that drunkard. I'm not the same anymore. Something has happened inside me. Hallelujah. And you witness the gospel. Hallelujah. Your testimony must change. Your testimony must change, brother, sister. You cannot rely on manna anymore. Because man is just to sustain you. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard of a testimony where you, you stand up? You say you're giving a testimony. You say, I want to thank God because I was really in trouble and there was nothing at home. And then one of, one of my sisters in Australia, they sent, me, uh, they sent me some money. Oh, I saw God. And you hear an unbeliever says, ah, that has happened to me also. It's not a testimony. You need something that will make the devil faint. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something that will confuse the devil. And you must change your attitude, brother. No matter what you go through, you must keep going, keep walking with God. Oh, I can hear the signal. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. I want to quote number three. 590409. Mary's belief. Paragraph 30. Problem says, South Africa recently, a man who had never wore, he had never, who had never had a pair of shoes on his feet in his life. Some people, they've never worn shoes in their life. You have got food on the table. 
You have got a roof above your head. You have got clothes around you. And yet you still complain. Some of you went to the early schools. Some of you are be being sent by their parents to the best of the schools. Yet you still complain. There are people right now that if they get a meal, they will come to the altar and thank God. You don't realize the value of what your parents are doing for you. A man who had never wore, had a pair of shoes on his feet in his life, been way back in the jungles, as a born back there years ago by missionary parents. He was born with deformed feet. When he came up through there, clubbing his feet along, he had a shoe box on his arm. Like this. A box of shoes in his arms. Hallelujah. Born with deformed foot. Abraham says, and someone said to him, what you got in there? He said, a pair of shoes. Then the man was confused because he was looking at the deformed feet and said, how is he going to wear the shoes? Then he said, what do you expect to do with them? Do they, are they going to be your fathers? He said, I am going to wear them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am going to wear them. I am going to get what I want. I am going to be blessed. I am going to be better. I am going to be better than what I am. I am going to be blessed. He said, I am going to wear them. And when the service was over, he had those shoes on, running down through the lot, just as hard as he could go, praising God. What did he do? He took God at his word. He said so much when he was asked. He said, I seen others coming that was crippled, was healed. And I seen those who were blind could see again. And God would not turn me down. That's the way to believe it. God won't turn me down. When you know that your God is not going to turn you down. He is not going to turn you down, brother, sister. If you believe, if you are serious, if you are sincere, he will not turn you down. Hallelujah. How many want to walk this road? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He won't let you down, brother, sister. Everywhere you go, you must know that you need the seal of God. Hallelujah. You need the seal of God. Everywhere you go. Amen. Can we stand on our feet? How sweet the sound that it rich like me. I was was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twice scream that to my heart to as the pastor comes forward and grace my face really
getting ready to pray Lord I need that mark I need the seal on my forehead I need the Holy Ghost for surely without the Holy Ghost there is no rapture for you without the Holy Ghost there is no future for you didn't the Bible say that seek ye first seek ye first the kingdom of God seek ye first the baptism of the Holy Ghost Seek your face to be marked on your forehead. It's a permanent mark. Once you are marked by God, you are marked from eternity to eternity. There is no backsliding. There is no going back. You are, you are going forward. And these things shall be added. We don't follow after the things that are to be added. Once we align with the Holy Ghost, once we are walking with God, once we are in the presence of God, He takes care of all these other things. That's the gospel, children of God. As we want to pray, you want to be remembered in prayer. Don't be like a timber and his friend. Don't try shortcuts. Don't try cutting the corner. Don't try jumping through the fence. You must come through the door. You must come with a ticket. You must come with a token. And the token is the Holy Ghost. Want to pray? If you want to be remembered in prayer, just raise up your hand. And if you really are serious, you say, Lord, I need an experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to believe you with all my heart. I want this mark deep down in my soul. I don't just want fleshly uh, experiences. They are good, but I want to go deeper into the soul. I want an experience where you turn me away from being a Jacob to being a prince with you, to being Israel with you. I don't want just to be a church member. I don't want to be just a bench warmer. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The message of the Holy Ghost that's what God is emphasizing because without that, that destroying angels are ready. Didn't the prophet warn us and say, watch Russia. Watch what is happening in the world. It's bringing us closer for this gospel to go back to the Jews. Don't let the gospel go back to the Jews before you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Time for playing is over. Time for playing church is over. Time for playing on the dark side of social media. It's over. Time to play on the dark side of YouTube is over. I need something that is going to make me overcome. Something that's going to make me strong. That in the absence of everybody, I'm still faithful. I want to pray. And if you want to be remembered in prayer, just raise your hand wherever you are. If you are so serious about it, as we were listening to the message yesterday with the family, Brother Abraham says, if you are serious, come and kneel on the altar. God will meet you there on the altar. 
Say, Lord, I have a deformity. 